summer is almost here and if you're like me summer means fresh garden vegetables and also canned vegetables today's class I want to teach you some of the basics of using a pressure canner uh, many people tell me that they're afraid of a pressure canner but they're made really safe today and as long as you follow precautions and instructions you'll be safe as well hi my name is April Martin and I work with the University of Tennessee TSU extension program of DeKalb County and in the class I'm going to be covering some of the basic principles of using a pressure canner before we get started, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button down below, give me a thumbs up, like, and that way you'll get more of these videos sent to your inbox. Also, I re highly recommend that you go to the utextension.edu website and download our free publication called Canning Foods. It's publication 724. So with that, come along with me and learn how to pressure can. Before we get started, let's ensure that we've got all of our equipment, all of our supplies ready to go. Since we're canning a low acid food, we're going to need a pressure canner. This pressure canner is a dial gauge, which as you can see has the dial on the top lid. There's also weighted gauge canners as well, but it's very important since we're canning low acid foods that we're using a pressure canner. We're also going to need some mason type canning jars. Remember we want real canning jars and not commercial type jars such as mayonnaise or peanut butter glass jars. It's also really handy if you can to have a jar lifter on hand. It makes it a whole lot easier to pull the jars out of the hot bowl and water. A magnet that will help you get the uh, lids out of boiling water to put on the jars. A spatula comes in real handy for getting air bubbles out of the jars. Of course, you're going to need your screw bands and your lids to go on top of the jars and the carrots. Now that we've got all our supplies ready, let's get started. Now we want to sterilize our jars before we get started. And one of the ways that I like to do that is to go ahead and set my oven to 250. And then put my jars in on a cookie sheet in the oven and you can just be letting those heat up while you're preparing your carrots. Next, we're going to wash our carrots and scrub them with a veggie scrubber. And then either slice or dice your carrots. At the beginning of each canning season, you'll want to take your lid to your pressure canner, take off the gasket, and just ensure that there are no major uh, well cuts anywhere in the gasket, which can prevent your pressure canner from sealing. And also at the beginning of each canning season, it's a very good idea to take your canner, if you have a dial gauge, take it to your local extension office. Most extension offices have access to a pressure canner, canner testing, um, which will ensure that your uh, pressure in your tester, tester canner is accurate. With your pressure canner, you want to fill the bottom of the canner with at least two to three inches of water. And a pressure canner is different from a water bath canner. You don't need to fill it up, up above the level of the jars. Um, in a water bath canner, you want to make sure that you go two to three inches above the tops of your jars. And a pressure canner works differently because we're heating with pressure. We can reach a higher temperature under pressure, so as much water is not needed, only two to three inches. You also want to make sure that you've put your rack in the bottom of the canner. This is just to protect your glass jars. Preparing your carrots in the jar, you have two options. You can do the raw pack method, which is you're just going to put your raw vegetables, your carrots, inside. And we're leaving a half inch head space at the top. So I want to leave a little room there for the, the water. And the raw pack method, you're going to, the vegetables are not cooked, but you're going to add hot boiling water. And by the way, these jars were sanitized in the kitchen, so they're, they're really hot to make sure they're sanitary. Now we're going to pour our boil, boiling water over the carrots. And again, we're going to leave a half inch head space at the top. Do it just a little bit more. 
So that is the raw uh, pack method. And don't forget we need to drop our um, lids in water and just let them come to a simmer to a boil to make sure that they're good and sanitized. The other jar packing method is called the hot pack method and that's where you bring your vegetables to a boil. Boil for five minutes with carrots. Different vegetables will need different processing times. Check your recipe. In the hot pack method, we're going to place our funnel on top of our jar. And then we're going to pour our carrots in. Actually, it might be better so we don't get too much water. And then I'm going to use my um, dipper here. Again, we're going to half an inch. Don't want to get too much water in there, so you might want to drain some of it out. But this is our hot packing method where you um, you're going to boil the vegetables for a certain period of time, depending on the recipe, and then pour them in the jar. And again, we're trying to maintain about a half an inch headspace at the top to prevent the jar from coming loose. Then you want to take a spatula, or if you don't have a spatula, some kind of knife, and go around the edges of the jar. And this just helps to remove any air bubbles that might be inside and get everything packed in well. I might could add just a couple more carrots though because we're a little less than a half an inch from the top. There we go. And next you want to make sure that you have sanitized your lids in simmering water. Put your lid on. Again, these are used one time only. Then we're going to add our screw band. got one little thing let me take this back off we're gonna now this is just an option for pint jars you can add half a teaspoon of salt for quarts you can add a full teaspoon salt is optional okay now we're ready to target to our pressure canner one little device I forgot to mention is this little magnet that you can get at the store a lot of times it comes in canning kits it makes it really easy when you've got hot boiling water with your lids it makes it a little bit safer for you to retrieve it from the water now we're going to transfer our jars over to our pressure canner using our jar lifter these are really invaluable to have they make it so much easier um, it's safer you don't have a hot jar to hold on to as you're going down into the pressure canner now using our jar lifter we're going to put our jars down inside the pressure canner and you only need two to three inches of water in the bottom of a pressure canner unlike a water bath canner where you need to cover your jars two or three inches over the tops of the jars so when using a pressure canner we're depending on the pressure that's built up um, to increase the temperature rather than the temperature of the water. Okay, next we'll want to put our lid on, get that adjusted right. Now before you start processing the time that's noted in your recipe, you want to allow the steam to escape from the petcock for at least 10 minutes. And this is going to allow air to be pushed from the canner air that's left in the canner can interfere with a tree pressure reading. So you want to do at least 10 minutes of this venting. For a dial gauge canner like this one, you'll then want to um, put on your, close the pet cock and allow the pressure to rise to 11 pounds at 240 degrees. Once our dial gauge reaches 11 pounds of pressure, then we start the processing time and according to our recipe for pint jars that's going to be 25 minutes and for quart jars 30 minutes now if you're using a weighted gauge instead of a dial gauge like this one you only need to get to 10 pounds but we do not start counting the processing time until our gauge reaches 11 pounds on this dial gauge when the required time is up turn off the range unit and slide the canner off you want to let the canner cool slowly. Do not hasten the cooling in any way. And after the gauge has been at zero for about five minutes, you can slowly open the pet cock. Usually there will be some air that will escape the, through the vent pipe. 
Then you want to take your lid slowly and carefully off. And be careful with the steam. Very, very hot. Then you can take your jar lifter, and this is where the jar lifter comes in very handy. It makes it much safer for you and remove all your canned jars from the canner. Aren't they beautiful? Love those orange colors. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Comment below with questions. And don't forget, we have a free publication that you can download from the University of Tennessee at this website. We'll also leave that in the comments.